Welcome to another Being Outdoors Words of Matthias. This time we're going to take a look into Jonah chapter 4. And if you know the story of Jonah, Jonah was called by God to preach to Nineveh to get them to repent of their sins. And, um, and so Jonah chose not to do that. And because of all of that, God sent a great storm and, and Jonah was thrown overboard and was swallowed by a great fish, got his act together, went to Nineveh, preached, and preached a revival, no less. And many people uh, changed their ways, got saved. The Bible says that even the king himself uh, made a decree that they should fast and they were going to repent and show God their concern that they were going to change and they were going to turn from their wicked ways. And because of that, they were going to do better. And the Bible says that God repented of the evil that he was going to do to them and chose to do it not. So, you know, Jonah was called to a mission field, went to it, preached, saw results, and then we're going to read about what his reaction was. In Jonah chapter 4, verse 1, it says, But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my same when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before into Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, and slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Then said the Lord, Doest thou well to be angry? After all that happened, and Jonah saw the results, and, and that God repented, the Bible says he got angry, and he was displeased, and he said that he... Um, would rather just go ahead and die. And Jonah got in this very weird funk to where he got angry and had a little bit of a temper or, or anger issue to the point where he just said, I don't want to die. I, I would just assume die. And he asked the Lord to kill him. And, and you know, God was like, Does, does it do you good to be angry? Is it? And the Bible says, be angry and sin not. And the Bible is full of verses where it says, talks about, that you can be angry and not let the sun go down upon your wrath. And when it talks about being angry, we all get upset and angry throughout life through things that happen. Um, but you know what? Anger is a state of mind and an attitude that you can either let control you and control your thoughts and subsequently control your actions as well, or you can choose to control that anger and not let it control you. And if you don't get control of that anger, those things can get worse and worse. And Jonah here, you can see that he didn't have control of that, and he let it get worse and worse. And that's why the Bible says, "Be angry and sin not." You can be angry, but the fact, uh, but when you let it uh, manifest itself into where that's all you think about, and you have ill will, and you or you or and it comes out in your words where you say things you're not supposed to, or or physically, and that's when it becomes sin. And so we have to be very careful that. We that we can be angry, but that we don't sin at the same time. In verse 5, it says, So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth, and sat under it in the shadow, till he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord God prepared a gourd, and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head, and deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd. And I just want to say something. In verse 5 it says, So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. There made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. You know what I see? I see a man that saw people, a revival start to take place. And he went out and he sat in that booth. And you know what his attitude was? I wonder if they'll stick to it. Oh, they were just saying it. He, he didn't have any faith in his own Christianity. He didn't have faith in God that God could change their hearts. He didn't have any faith in the work that God was doing in those people's lives. And he sat out there like a lot of us do and say, I wonder what will happen. I'm just going to sit here and watch. And if you think about it, that is a terrible, terrible state of mind. His state of mind was, I want to see what they're going to do. See that? Now, he's already preached and he did do what God asked him to do as far as preaching. But after that, he was done. He, he wasn't going to do anything else to help those people. He wasn't going to do anything else as far as trying to promote God's Word and try, trying to win others. No, he, he was done. He, he was tapped out. He wasn't going to do anything. He's just going to see what happened. You know, he had no more concern for those people after he got done preaching. And, and it was almost as if he preached because of the repercussions from the whale 
okay, I'll do what God wants me to do. And, and it makes you think that while he did preach, he may not have had a good attitude the whole time he preached. But God gave the increase, and that's why it worked, the way, it worked out the way it did. That he was so wrapped up in himself that he never even had a really good attitude. He just went and got done what God said because he didn't want no more what he had gotten. And I think sometimes as Christians, we get like that. Where we, where we sit back and we, and we don't want to help, we don't want to say anything, we don't want to encourage anybody, we don't want to do anything. We just sit and watch other people and just see what will happen. See if they'll mess up again. Oh, and, and, and criticize somebody else when their marriage falls apart. Or criticize someone else who has an affair. Or criticize somebody else who has a way over a kid. Or, or whatever their situation may be, maybe finances, or, or they messed up with alcohol or drugs or whatever. We just want to look. We want to help them. We don't want to do anything. They would promote and try to lift up that person, encourage them, and get them back on the right track. Just want to run down the dirt, just see what happened. And that's a wicked attitude if you have that. And, and, and I'm talking to myself. There's times where I've been guilty of that attitude, where I haven't had that right attitude toward other people that I should. And, and I just want to be a spectator. Let's work, try to work on that. Let me keep going. And so God prepared a gourd that came up, and, and Jonah was finally glad for something. He was glad for the gourd because he got some shade. And it says, But God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day, and it smote the gourd that it withered. And it came to pass when the sun did arise that God prepared a vehement east wind, and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah, that he fainted and wished himself to die, and said, It is better for me to die than to live. And God said to Jonah, Dost thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. Jonah once is sitting out there, gets a little gourd, gets a little shade. The next day, God sends a worm. That worm kills that gourd, and 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 now Jonah's back out in the sun. And as he's down in the sun and getting toasted, what does he say? Mm, I'm mad. I wish I could die. And there he is back again, that same old attitude. Here's Jonah again. And that's a wrong, bad attitude, but Jonah fell right back into that again. Here we are in one chapter. Jonah twice is mad and asking God to to kill him because things didn't go his way just getting a bad attitude and he's mad he ain't got control of that anger and and here he is once again okay verse 10 then said the lord thou hast had pity on the gourd for for the which thou hast not labored neither made us grow which came up in a night and perished in a night and should i not spare nineveh that great city where are more than six thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and also much cattle God done some straight talking there to Jonah. You know what God said, Jonah, you you didn't prepare that gourd, but you were glad for it. But I gave it and took it away, and you weren't glad for it. I mean, you were glad for it, but you didn't labor. You didn't do anything for it. It was just there, and and that's what you were glad about. And there's 120,000 people, or more than 120,000 people in Nineveh that don't know right from wrong, that need somebody probably to lead them. Okay, not probably they do. They need somebody. I'm not sure if that's what God was asking him to do. But, you know, if, if when people first get saved, they need discipleship and stuff. And, and, and God may be saying, John, that's what you need to be doing. And and he said, there's a, they don't know the right from their left. These people just got saved. They're trying to do what's right. You know, we're worried about them falling back into sin and messing up again. And, and, and God says, you don't care about that. Here's 120 yeah, should, you know, and I've spared them, but your concern's on the gourd. You know what God was saying, basically, bluntly, is that you're a spoiled brat fixated on yourself. You're self-absorbed. And Jonah had no concern for those people. Sure, he preached, but once he was done, he cared more about the gourd. He cared more about the shade than whether these people went to heaven or hell. He cared more about the shade than being a witness to those people and their Christian growth and development after that point. He was fixated on himself. And I say this to say that to say this, that so many times today we get fixated on ourselves. We don't see anyone else hurting. We don't see anyone else who needs the Lord. We don't see anybody else who needs who needs help or anyone that needs encouragement or or anything else other than what we need. What we need, what our spouse needs, what our kids need, our family needs. Outside of that, we don't want to help nobody else. 
And we have to be careful about that because so many times today, in today's world, which is an I world, it's all about me. It's all about self-pleasure. And the Bible tells us that, that in, the, in the last days, men will be lovers of their own selves. And, and, and you know what? We have to be careful as Christians and that we do not get so stuck on ourselves that we can't see other people. We can't see other people hurting. We can't see other people that need help. So many times we get stuck on the ball games, the, the, our, our kids, their ball games, and, and all of our activities that we do that we don't see anything else. And so I want us to think about Jonah, me included. You know, do, we, do we have control of that anger? Secondly, do we just sit back and watch other people and we have no concern? And then are we so self-absorbed that we don't see that other people need help and seeing the jobs that they're doing, whether it's in our church, whether it's at home, or something we need to clean up in our own life. Are we so self-absorbed we don't see that? Thanks for watching. This is the words of Matthias from Being Outdoors. If you have any questions about what you're seeing or heard, you can email us at eric at beingoutdoors.com. You can call us at 336-564-2400. And we'll be back next time with another devotional uh, words of Matthias.